Hello guys. So in this tutorial I'm gonna show you pretty much lightweight methods how you can add animation to the pickup item. Once you think about pickup item, you probably will realize an animation. It's a simple animation with that axis with a constant rate. There are several ways how you can achieve this result. The first one by using the rotation movement component and it's gonna physically rotate the transform of uh, static mesh. The other one is by using a uh, material, uh, it's so-called vertex animation. We should start with the first one. So, I have backpack uh, actor here, and at the left top corner, I have added rotation movement component. Here on the right side, you may see that rotation rate is 45 on the dead axis. Now, let's launch the game and see our results. So here, you may see that my game thread is nearly 13 milliseconds, while GPU is 5. So now I'm gonna deactivate the rotation movement component, just like this. And I'm gonna add my vertex animation. So if I launch the game, here are our results. So it's 5 milliseconds of the game thread, and on the GPU side it's nearly 4 milliseconds. As you can see guys, from our results, it's much better to use the vertex animation. Here is the graph that we're gonna use and we're gonna calculate the world position offset. Also, we're gonna calculate our normals because by default, if you just rotate your uh, static mesh, normals gonna be uh, messed up. So now we can take a look at the world normal buffer. And from what I can see, everything looks perfectly fine and our normals are recalculated correctly. Now, back to our material. Actually, it's the material function, and I'm gonna use it uh, further in my master material. So, as you can see, uh, calculations are nearly the same, because otherwise you will face some visual artifacts, so make sure that normalized rotation axis, rotation angle, and the pivot point incoming data are the same. So, here we need to calculate the rotation rate for our normals and the world position offset. For this we use rotate about axis and first of all we need to define the axis around which we're gonna rotate our mesh. So for this I use the vector 3 with the output of 0, 0, 1. So it's the z axis. Rotation angle is the simple time multiplied by uh, some value. And the higher value is, the more rotation speed you will receive. Pivot point should be 0. And for our normals we use preskinned local normal. For our world position offset, we use preskinned local position. Don't be afraid to use those nodes, because they work perfectly fine both for the static and the skeletal mesh. Back to our normals. So we need to add the received rotation rate to our preskinned local normal, and then we need to normalize the output value, because it should be in range from minus 1 to 1. As preskinned local normal uh, is calculated inside the local space, we need to transform it from the local space to the tangent space. Also, if you take a look at the tall tip, you'll see that the preskinned local normal is calculated on the vertex shader stage. So, uh, as the normal input uh, receives only the pixel shader calculations, we need to use the vertex interpolator. And for the world position offset, as it's also calculated inside the local space, we need to transform it from the local space to the world space. You also need to subtract the object pivot location, because otherwise, once you try to move your mesh on the level, the pivot point and the mesh are going to be in different directions. So, master material. First of all, I extract the data from the material function and store it to the named root nodes. You may see that I also have a switch, so I can decide whether I need to activate the vertex animation on each particular asset or not. The logic is kind of simple. For normals, I need to blend the calculated normals from the material function with the one that I have here in my uh, asset. So it's the simple normal map texture. As for the world position, if I don't need it, I simply use zero. And the end result looks like this. So guys, I hope you like this tutorial and as always, Please subscribe to my channel, leave your feedback, 
press like button and if you want to support me monetarily, you can follow up the link under this video to my Patreon and buy a subscription. See you soon.